medical marijuana for pets. In this edition of Entry Seekers, I'm gonna discuss the recent news story about medical marijuana for pets. What's true, what's not, and what you need to know. <laughs> oh, it's a phone! Happy. Hello you guys, welcome back to my next channel. For those of you who are new, welcome. Today's video uh, comes in part from a very recent news story about a pet owner's unique and very positive experience for using medical marijuana for their dog. This particular story is about a pet owner who has an older dog who eventually had been diagnosed with canine cognitive dysfunction. A couple big things about this story. First, the big overarching message is really positive. It's a generally difficult condition to treat. Yeah, cognitive dysfunction in a dog. Uh, the owner's really being left with no other choice, doing some of their own research, um, looking towards CBD, or CBD oil uh, as a potential solution and successfully treating their dog for cognitive dysfunction. A couple things were said uh, in that story though, which I feel need to be addressed and need to be corrected. Uh, the first statement, which was repeated a number of times, is that THC is very dangerous to dogs. Not just dangerous, you know, potentially very, very toxic. It's giving you the message, the pet owner, that there's huge risks associated with using these marijuana products uh, with your pets. First and foremost, you need to be cautious about anything you're going to be giving your dog or cat. You need to be doing appropriate research. Um, that being said, um, there are virtually zero cases of you know, serious toxicities in dogs and cats as a result of the consumption of THC. So-called minimum lethal dose for THC uh, is said to be 3,000 milligrams per kilo. Uh, so if we take a small dog, a small 10 pound dog, they weigh about five kilos. So we're looking at 15,000 milligrams of THC. So as an example, here's my sample THC. It's actually Yorkshire gold tea, it really is tea. And on my, upon my research, they're saying the average marijuana joint that a person would use might contain uh, upwards of 750 to 1,000 milligrams of THC. We need to get up to 15,000 milligrams. So let's just say each one is, so for a 10 pound dog, we would need, and here's a teaspoon, which about the, uh, I think about the average amount someone would put in a marijuana joint, we would need Two, three. I'm gonna scoop it out. 15 of these for a small 10 pound dog. So I was recently at, so I'm just counting, we're up to 10, 11, 12. I was recently at a dispensary, as you all know. My own dog had uh, cancer and I treated him with primarily CBD oil, a small, small amount of THC. So I wanted to visually show you that. So here is our bit substantial amount. As you can see there, we're saying it's that amount for a 10 pound dog. <clears throat> Which is a huge amount <clears throat> to get to 15,000 milligrams. I'm speaking on this, on this because my own dog uh, had, was Lewis was diagnosed with cancer. The only way I was able to give him proper palliative pain care was using primarily CBD oil with a small amount of, amount of THC. So I saw the wonderful, amazing benefits of it, and that's why I'm in part speaking to this video. So in terms of the amount that's toxic, they're saying 15,000 milligrams for a 10 pound dog. I picked up a syringe, which is a one cc syringe of THC. Um, in part, I was using it because it's much better for pain than just CBD. And that one cc syringe contained 500 milligrams of THC. I was giving him 0.05 of a milligram of, of that syringe full. 
which equates to you know somewhere around 50 milligrams a day. And so based on Lewis's weight, he would need to consume you know upwards of 100,000 milligrams, which let's just take this. We know this is a 10 pound dog. This is how much Lewis, oh, jeepers creepers, minus the stuff I just put on the floor. Uh, let's see, pretty much all this and more, which would never happen. You know, I had a syringe, a large syringe, which lasted me two weeks. And I mean, that contained 600 milligrams, which is about a hundredth of this potentially toxic dose. So my point being in that first part is factually, could THC be toxic? Yes, it could. Is it anywhere close to being toxic in the levels that's being dispensed and available to you and or I? No, it's not. Incredibly safe. A second point that was brought up in the story, so the claim was that there is no research really backing, you know, the safety or effectiveness of CBD and or THC and other cannabidioids uh, for dogs and cats. Once again, uh, not completely valid. Surprisingly, there's a pile of research out there. You know, I, I just you can go on and Google it now, and I'm going to put some of the links under this video. Here, you know, this is from the Veterinary Practice News. Cannabis for intractable epilepsy. My point being, once again, is there is a substantial body of research. Um, are there perhaps the level of studies that we'd like to see? Hmm, probably not. You may or may not be surprised that there's a number of veterinary drugs on the market now which only have very limited, if you know, one, two, or three, you know, industry performed studies. For instance, we have a few new immunosuppressive type drugs that are modulating the immune system in treatment for allergies that you know, have very little, you know, double blind studies uh, to back their safety and effectiveness. Yet, I don't see them being widely condemned as, you know, lacking enough scientific research to being sold at veterinarians throughout North America. So I want to leave you with the points that marijuana has a huge place in terms of healthcare for our pets. Uh, the mar marijuana products, primarily CBD oil, um, can offer huge benefits to our pets for arthritis, pain, inflammation, anxiety disorders, seizure disorders, and cancer. My own experience in using CBD oil for my dog Lewis was overwhelmingly positive. Um, no question I would use it again. Um, if I have any pet owner asking me about the benefits of it, I'm happy to talk to them about it, um, share my experience, along with related them, um, you know, the knowledge that I've gained in terms of some of the research that's been done, um, all the variety of you know, testimonials that are coming from dog and cat owners, and you know, just my basic understanding of alternative medicine, conventional medicine, and my experience in veterinary practice seeing you know, many dogs having consumed marijuana, never seeing ever in my experience seeing an animal have any serious secondary complications or ever dying that any type of marijuana toxicity. Thank you for watching this edition of Veterinary Secrets. If you get to do so, I encourage you to like this video click up there to subscribe to my channel. Then lastly, I want you to go ahead, click that link way down there in the box below. I can send you my free books and videos on how to heal your pets at home with my top natural remedies.